Welcome to my channel, I'm Dr. Romano. Have you ever wondered why the Vanderbilts lost all their wealth? Or have you ever wondered why certain families lose all their wealth in the first or second generation? Or maybe the third generation? There's reasons that happens. And unfortunately, because the first generation, the entrepreneur, who's able to make those, that money, just because a person is able to make their money, it doesn't mean that they're able to keep it. You need to use risk management to keep wealth. Risk management is the most important thing that there is. And what is risk management? Well, it's managing your risk against issues that may come up, uh, you know, litigation, um, divorce, death. Uh, you know, if you get into a car accident, there's so many risks that I could go over, but it just depends what we're really talking about. Now, the Van De I'm not gonna give you a history on the Vanderbilts, but the first generation Cornelius Vanderbilt, he amassed a fortune through railroad and other means. Then he died, his son takes over Billy and doubles it. He was lucky because the railroad took off and it, that industry was growing. But then by the third generation, the railroads kind of diminished. So the second person, Billy, he took his parents' assets and he invested it in bonds because he was an entrepreneur like his dad, okay? And of course, when he died, he divided the wealth up to a number of children that further diminished their wealth then that's the third generation. The third generation, because they inherited so much money, they were spending it faster than they can make it. Their wives, their husbands building mansions. For example, um, we have Fifth Avenue. There used to be tons of mansions like the Cartier building or the building where Bergdorf Goodman was, is. That was a, a gigantic mansion that was knocked down and, and they built Bergdorf Goodman. Or there's many other properties. Grand Central Station, the Commodore Hotel, which is the Hyatt Hotel next to Grand Central Station. There's other property, the New York Public Library. That's how wealthy they were. And so today, the world's wealthiest person, let's say in America, could be Ian, the uh, owner, owner of Tesla, let's say, He's nowhere near how wealthy Cornelius or Billy Vanderbilt was. It's not even close. How could Cornelius Vanderbilt changed what he did and actually preserved his wealth? Before we continue the video, please remember to subscribe if you like my channel. And please also, if you watch the video, do thumbs up. It really does help me because it gets the video out to other people so they can also help themselves. All he had to do, instead of giving your money away to the next generation, you put all your assets into a private foundation. If you want to do an American foundation, that's fine, or a European, like, in the best place to do a private foundation would be um, Lechenstein because of their constitution. As long as you don't live in Lechenstein and you, you won't have to pay taxes on that private foundation. Uh, but if you are do, living in America, that's fine. Now there's all legal stuff concerning that. Asset protection, for, for example, uh, because it's a foreign entity and there's ways to also protect yourself even further by separating your assets into LLCs. So each actual property gets its own LLC here in America. And the owner of that LLC is the private foundation in Lechenstein. That's pure asset protection. And if you don't wanna go that far, which you should, you could still do the private foundation in America. Now, Henry Ford said, I control everything, but I own nothing. What did he mean by that? He meant he has put his assets into a private foundation. So he could literally punch anyone he wants and he has no, they can't sue him because there's nothing that they're gonna get. I'm, I'm just using this as an example, but you get the point. 
If you look up the Ford Foundation and when it was created, the amount of money that he put into it is pennies compared to what it is today. So if Cornelius Vanderbilt, instead of giving his assets to his son, he should have created a private foundation and the next generation, Billy Vanderbilt, would have just managed that private foundation. The third generation would not have been able to spend it like they did. Uh, building multiple houses all around the world, billion, well, actually it would be billions of dollars in today's money. And just the, the, the parties. Is it normal to give a, a two carat diamond to all the people at a party? If you watch the movie called Age of Innocence, they were talking about the Vanderbilts. So to make a long story short, you don't want to give your assets to anyone, but to a private foundation. And in that private foundation, you need to write a document. I call it the constitution, but it's not a constitution document. Your attorney could um, actually write it for you. So once you created not a trust, because a trust is a agreement and agreements can be broken. You want a rock solid fa foundation in Lechenstein, okay? It doesn't cost thousands of dollars to do this. There's companies that actually have pre-packaged deals that that's what they deal with. You could go to a trust company to have this done. I'm not working for anyone. I don't, you know, I don't have any connections to this. I just know the concepts behind it. And I also know the best companies to go to. In other videos, I did mention Northern Trust, uh, but there's multiple companies that you can go to. Uh, however, I would advise you, do not speak to your son-in-law or daughter-in-law if they're an attorney. Don't waste your time. They're going to tell you, no, it's not a good idea. Why would they say that? They're going to tell you that because they want your daughter or son's assets. And so they're going to make sure that you don't create that private foundation because then they'll get nothing from their, their, their wife or their husband in a divorce. Now, for those of you who are um, sort of, you know, let's say you are married to a rich woman and you're, you know, you're not the one with the money. Well, how, what would the benefit be by having her create a private foundation? Okay, I'm going to tell you. One, you are going to die someday or maybe you get married one day. You lose all of it. Secondly, if she had kids with another man, that's not your money. That's the kid's money. And so it is your fiduciary responsibility to make sure that that money is preserved. Don't be a gold digger. You're out there. I know you're out there. So you have to remember that if you are the one with the money, just because you're the one that's capable of making that hundred thousands or millions or billions, it doesn't mean that you're the one that's going to preserve it. What if you start to have a little bit brain issues when you turn 50 or you get into a car accident, like a motorcycle accident and it affects your brain. So maybe in your thirties and forties, you are able to make that money, but in your fifties and sixties, you could guarantee you're going to lose it. Just look up the, the uh, stats on, on all of this. It's enormous. And when you realize this, how high it is to lose all your money. For example, if you're a basketball player, a football player, or an athlete that make, made a lot of money in your early 20s. I think the stats say that 90% of them are basically poor by the time they reach 40. Is that possible? Oh my God. Well, if it is, this is the reason. So... If you had created your private foundation, put all your assets in there and it's earning money every month, every year, you would only have the proceeds to live off of. And that's what you want to do. Okay. Because you're saving money on taxes. You're saving money on litigation. Litigation is very expensive. And so for you lawyers out there, you have to say to yourself, why is it all your clients don't have this prepared already? There's many people out there that don't actually make wills. That's scary. 
But if they had a private foundation, then that, that would all be that would all be accomplished. Okay? So once you create that private foundation in Lechenstein, remember that, very important, not Cook Islands, not the Belize. Um, Belize is one step below Lechenstein. In a past previous video, I have mentioned Luxembourg. It's, that's good too, but not really. And so that's what you want to do to pr protect your assets. And what are the benefits of this? Well, if you go brain dead, you've already written that in that constitution what would happen. For example, who gets to manage it? You also have to protect the future generations to a manager that would actually want to liquidate it. So you need to write bullet points, whatever you want to call it, that's for the lawyer to discuss with you, how to preserve this for multiple generations. So if Henry Ford, for example, had put all his assets into his private foundation, it wouldn't have been worth a couple of billion. It would be worth probably a trillion dollars today, minimum, with the compound interest and all of that. So because it's worth billions now, think about all the family members that, has, that he created. Let's say there's 100 people. Well, there's 100 people that could be receiving the interest per year on that private foundation. I'm not expecting all of it. No, only 1% you want uh, your future generation to have. Uh, future, uh, meaning 1% of the proceeds that the private foundation made. So all the properties, the commodity portfolio, everything. And that you create like a pension for them. Now, of course, what you could also add to it, which is very important, is that when they die, that they have to put their assets and give it to the private foundation so that the, the private foundation grows. All right. Now you could also add a clause that states that if you want to sell a property, you can't just liquidate and take it. No, they have to buy another property similar to it. This is very important to write all this stuff, how to balance a portfolio or how to manage risk. And so basically that's the basic concepts on how to protect your assets. This is why the Vanderbilts are not rich anymore. And it's only how many generations, let's see, Cornelius, Billy, the next generation, Gloria Vanderbilt, and then Cooper Anderson. So yes, Gloria Vanderbilt did receive $5 million in her trust, but what happened to the trust? Exactly, it was a waste of time. It was the third generation that created that, that gave that money to his, his grandchild, he should have taken that $5 million and put a private foundation for Gloria Vanderbilt and put in strict bullet points what she could do with it. That you can't just buy real estate with it and, and, and sell it or, or whatever it was. If you buy real estate with it, then you have to keep it in there. Uh, if you want to open a business, you can't do that. It's a 50-50 chance of you going bankrupt when you open a business. And so that's another reason why a private foundation is so important to have. Please remember, if you like my video, to subscribe, do thumbs up since you did watch this video, because it will really push my video in front of other people so that other people learn how to protect their assets. And please remember to share my video with at least five people. And finally, send me messages to the live chat so I can make future videos just for you. Thank you so much.